Why don't you say who you are, where you're from, and give me just some basic information. Hello, I'm Marty Simpson. I live in Sydney, Australia. I work with ISC, although I joined the wood in England because I'm English by nationality. I'm visiting North America at the moment. And what is the purpose of your visit? Well, Ramdan, who's my husband and the IC chairman, is traveling around with me, talking to them, as many members and groups as we can, can in the short time we have available, which is about three weeks in North America, to share some of the information about the upcoming World Congress, which will be held in Sydney in January 1989. <coughs> Because although we've put out the news through newsletters and the newspaper, the personal contact seems much more, you know, gets through to people, connects with their feelings, and we get feedback about what, how the members feel. Um, I'd like to, you to try to remember back when Bob Hawk passed away. Um, how did you feel? Where were you? And can you describe the events around that situation? Yes, I had a phone call about seven or eight o'clock one morning in Sydney. Ramdan was away over in Chilandak because it, he'd gone over for Salamatan for Baba's birthday. He had a really strong feeling he had to be there in Chilandak at that time. And I thought that my place was to stay home with the children because I'd already travelled and to be around for maintaining ISC office services. So a Subwood member rang me, whose wife was in Chalandak, and said, I want to let you know that I've just heard from my wife that Baba passed away earlier this morning. I just felt totally quiet. I am. Um, yes, earlier on in the year, I'd been very relieved when Baba had cancelled his plans to travel overseas. I felt it was too much of an obligation that we were laying on him. So after I heard that, I just felt really still and just no emotion at all, but that's the way I usually react when something dramatic happens. So I decided I'd get some more information and check out before I started sharing the news with the people around the world, because I saw it was an ISC responsibility to get the news out. So I rang back to Chilandak and talked to the Abdullah and Salama Pope, who are long-term residents of uh, Wisma Subwood and dear friends of ours. And they were just back at their house and they confirmed that that was uh, Papa had indeed passed away on the way to the hospital. But the feeling was very light at the compound. And everything was going ahead with the arrangements for the funeral. So then I worked out through my personal address uh, book at home and rang as many Sydney members as I could, to the ones that were in key positions, national chairman, interstate, and some of the interstate members. And then many of the people I rang in Sydney actually come from different countries overseas and they all agreed to ring someone in their country to share that with them. So I felt just like I was a facilitator to do that. And then later in the morning Ramdan rang from Chilandak with a fuller message from the family. So then I got organised and went into the office and put out a proper news brief on the email and I mailed out to the other countries. So I was just, just functioning really. The only time I really felt sad was when we went to the 40th day Salamatan for about 30 seconds as we walked in the graveyard. It's just like walking through a curtain between a room, and it was just like that curtain was a little bit of sorrow. But apart from that, no, I had this dream once from after Papa's death. He came, and I was having a real hard time at the office because of things, you know, money and so on. It's quite hard to come by to run the office, and I thought, the work wasn't being done as well as it could be because we were so short of funds we couldn't do what, what I saw was needed. And then I was in this room in my dream and it was like late twilight, virtually no light in the room at all. There was just this silhouetted open door with light in it and Buffer was standing in this door with real lots of light behind him. He was in this light area and he just stood there. I could see it was him. You could see his pet chair and so on. And he just said something very simple like, just do the best you can. You know, it was really reassuring. So, mm. that's about all I can say on that. How do you feel now about uh, the way Subud is developing or progressing? Well, I think, I suppose it always reflects where you're at yourself. At the beginning of the 
more realistic. So learning to combine the practical with our inner aspirations. Some of the um, huge, fantastic and amazing experiences people had that they thought could instantly become a material reality. We're now learning it takes time to work through the things. And it's not always easy. So that's sort of, in some ways, it sounds more quiet and low key. Yeah. For like four years, I'm doing super news of um, how you, all around the world there are people really committed to their Latihan. There's some people going through hard times, and some people taking things for granted because they're with a good group. But what really fills me with hope is like the newer generation children of Subut members. I see grown up. Some of them may not have formally become Subut members yet in Latiham, but you can see, you just when you're with them, you can feel that there's some real inner sort of centeredness in them, and clarity and a hope for the world. And I just really thank God that our th three older children have chosen to come to the Latiham themselves and are really experiencing it for themselves, not just because we told them it was a good idea. I sort of look at the perspective to the future, thinking that's what matters. Even if we have hard times as pioneers, it's something that really, each time a new person is opened, that's afresh for them. And even if we muck up in some areas, God's grace is there afresh for everyone who needs it. How has it been for you uh, and the family taking on ISC? It's been hard in a material way. We've always been pretty involved in different aspects of sort of committees at local level or national level. So the children are used to the phones ringing at three in the night or conversation around the table being all to do with sort of stuff. Yeah, materially it's been a struggle because it seems like a baseline budget that everyone agrees to doesn't always get fulfilled. So I guess after so many years you sort of run out of the initial enthusiasm, or you just run out, use up what spare reserves of energy you have. But I really hope the World Congress can sort of be a worthwhile cum culmination. Uh, I don't think our children have suffered inwardly at all. I guess it's been a grace in a way. We've met a lot with a lot of people who visited and given our kids a wider perspective. I guess if we hadn't been involved in ISC like that, we've probably been doing something else like gold mining in Kalamantan, which would have been slightly crazy too in a different way. <laughs> uh, what would you like to see come out of the next World Congress? Well, I, I'm really happy at the way now I'm more members and more different countries are giving time to having Kejuan gatherings and like spending time together just just to be quiet and get close with the Latihan and testing and not needing to debate and discuss stuff so much. Sure you've got to have an organization yeah. but I just feel that should be yeah. uh, just very simple. If it starts to be a heavy scene or politics or power or egos get into it then we should all hopefully be able to find be centered enough to know that we're being so I yeah, I just hope more kindness and more concern for people. Just aware that we have to use the light to hand each in their own individual way. Connect with the world. You know, like some kids I was talking to are becoming social workers and things like that. To link up with the real world and the young people. Not just to be like we're an exclusive kind of little group and the real world's too difficult. Because I don't believe that. But I'll look at it and see if I thought okay. I could do something that would be Do you have anything else you'd like to but say to know. anyone who might be watching? Yeah, just the Latihan has the core of everything, the worship of God, the grace from God, as long as we each individually can remember that. And trust that's trust God. I know we'll be alright. Okay. Well thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Okay, would you mind just saying who you are, where you're from, and give some basic information like that? Well, I'm Randon Simpson, and I'm chairman of ISC, and, uh, which is located in Australia. And 
Yeah. In case some people don't know what IOC means, some people think it means the International Super Committee, some people mean think, think it means the International Super Circus, but in reality it means that we're your international super servants. It's hmm. <laughs> an interesting <laughs> way of looking at it. That's how it is. Yeah. I think. Um, what is the purpose of your visiting? Well, you're right now you're in the Seattle area, but you've been traveling around all different parts of the world. What What is really the purpose of your traveling right now? Well, Papa's always told IC Chairman I should travel. He told me to travel, and. Uh, we never managed, I never managed to do very much of that because of lack of that funny, rare thing called money. But this time we managed to do it, Marnie and I, and um, one of the basic reasons is, uh, that we're here is to talk about our plans for the World Congress and to get feedback from everybody about it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any specific plans or anything that's developing from your conversations with people? Well. Yes, that's, I think the most encouraging thing and the, the common denominator that, that I see in all the groups so far reinforces the kind of experience I and other people had in Chalamet doing Papa's, Papa's death. And that is that for the first time I've seen sort of everybody saying, well now I'm responsible. Each individual saying, I'm responsible. Not those people over there or over there, or the committee or the helpers or somebody, I am because for the first time we're now being forced to stand on our own feet. And this, I believe, is the kind of democracy that I was talking about. That there are no leaders in Sylvia that we all follow. And if we can, if this feeling of respons individual responsibility can be expressed or mirrored at the World Congress, then we'll get on a, 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 a really true course for the next four or five years. Mm -hmm. Rondon, can you describe uh, the events that happened around <coughs> Bob Hart's death and how you felt in that, at the word? Well, I'm sure Bob gave many signs that he was going to die soon. I know that the last time I saw him, Bob was in the Ramadan before, and I felt at the time very strongly that it was the last time I'd have the uh, opportunity to see Bob. And I felt that Buffer was saying, oh yeah, 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 this is true. And just before Buffer died, um, it was doing, as you know, it was just a few hours off his birthday. Um, Buffer, it was a message came down in, in Buffer's house in Tumalong where the celebrations were being held. That Buffer wasn't well enough to come down. But suddenly I got pushed by a sort of wave of people towards the balcony, and Buffer appeared, and he talked little woman, the very frail. And we found ourselves singing Happy Birthday in English and in Indonesian. I noticed many people crying while this was going on. At the end, Bapa raised his hands in a way it seemed to be, in, I don't know, in supplication, I don't know what it was, but it was something very beautiful and very extraordinary. He raised his hands like this. And he turned and he dropped his stick. So I think he picked it up or somebody else did. And he walked a few paces and he turned back. He looked as if he'd said goodbye, like that. I don't know if he did or not. But still, somehow, it didn't impact upon me that it was going to really happen. Not then, you know, it's always later. And at about two o'clock that, that morning, I was sitting with some friends, two friends, on the veranda. And suddenly I found myself in a tremendous earthquake. I looked up at the ceiling and the lights went shaking and I looked in the water and my glass wasn't moving, nothing was moving, yet I was in a big earthquake. And I said to one of the other people, can you feel that? And they said, yes. And uh, they said, what do you think it is? And I said, well, I think it's proper. I don't know what it means, but I think it's proper. Then we walked away and went back to uh, their pad and I was sitting in a chair like this and I fell asleep and my head went back. And I found myself having a long chat, chat with Buffa, and he was explaining all kind things to me. And I remember saying, you know, Buffa, I'd never menaced, never come to Buffa with look one myself about the project in Australia. And I know many people said many things about what we're doing or not doing, and we never sort of said, well, we're not doing this or we're doing that. Buffa said, Buffa, 
said to me, Ramdan, I've at everything. It's all right, I've at everything. And he told me many things which I couldn't remember. At least my outer can't. I believe my inner can. And then a voice said, Martha is now going. But he'll be back when I woke up. And my friend said, what happened to you? So I told him. And then I went to see my best friend, Luke and Keel, and we chatted about what had happened to me. And then about four o'clock I went to bed. I fell asleep. And I had this tremendous experience for me, again, having a long, long discussion with Buffer about all kinds of things. This apparently went on, appeared to go on for a long time. And then, while Buffer was talking, I heard another voice saying, Buffer's dead. Buffer's dead. And there was a man shaking me at my bed and I'd say, Buffer's dead. And I woke up in really a state of profound shock because I was with Buffer. And he was very much alive, and yet this man was telling me he was dead. But it sunk in, of course, and Buffer had died. And I was in a kind of profound shock, dramatic shock, really, because I couldn't believe it, ha it happened. I mean, I knew it was going to happen, but it had happened. And I remember all of us, and maybe four in this room, sat in a kind of, I don't know, it was like um, those people who were discovered after being buried alive by the lava in Italy. I can't remember the name of the place now, perhaps you can. But we were just stuck in these attitudes, and it seemed like an awful long time. And part of me felt very happy because Buffer, God had been kind and taken Buffer out of this world to heaven. But my heart felt very sad that Buffer had left me because, apart from the, the big Buffer that brought this incredible grace into this world that we all had, let him. I loved him as a man and as a father a friend. Anyway, um, we all raced off to the house and uh, I found out later that when I had experienced this earthquake, in fact you grew high, you experienced the same earthquake while you were standing by Papa's bed and yet the bed had moved. Um, I also remember being rather naughty, I felt annoyed with Bob. And I said, Doctor, you can't do this to us. You can't leave us now, we're not ready. Just not ready. And I think it's probably the first time I ever in my life panicked at anything. That we just couldn't do it. And it was like a voice. And most people have had to have kind of experience like this. It was a voice which said, it sounded like Bob's voice saying, Ramdan. Do you really think Buffer would leave this world if Buffer wasn't absolutely sure that everybody was ready? And I felt ashamed. And I cried. But I realized that Buffer says we're ready and we are. And now perhaps we can stand on our own feet. Perhaps I can stand on my own feet stood in a lot of other people's feet. And I feel very happy. You know, we, Papa has left us, one has Papa left us, he's left us this incredible grace to let it in, kid you want or something. He's left us his living words in our archives, past and future generations. He's left us a structure, and he's left us each other. And by any book, that's a, that's a hell of a combination, a mini combination. So a lot, we've had all kinds of hiccups, in various levels of organization. And people get hurt, people probably get knocked. And uh, I've had some interesting times sailing some interesting seas in this kept in this little dinghy called Icy. I have tremendous hope for the future. And I just feel that um, we're so lucky. But I also feel 
I remember Marinda telling me a few years ago that hundreds of millions of children would die of starvation the next year. And thinking to myself, what the hell am I doing about that? Me, what am I doing? What are we doing about this? And I also had some experiences sitting in a traffic jam once when I wanted to climb over the car ahead of me, so I was impatient. And a voice said to me, look around you. You're grumbling. You're the laddie end. Many of these people, 99% of them haven't got the laddie end. In fact, none of them have the laddie end. There are all these kids starving and other people starving for food. A million starving for laddie end. So we have to do something in this world that we give these other people an opportunity to have what we have. And I guess that really just by each individual following his inner. And as Bapa said, big diligent in our hands. All the time, between every heartbeat and during every heartbeat. Another thing happened. One of my very best friends, called Hassan Vogel, who was one of the, one of the designers of Buffalo Pointed for the project in Sydney, spent about a year dying of cancer in Australia. And uh, I was in pretty close touch with him. And I remember when dawn came up, I was sitting, or nearly, about 20 feet, no, 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 10 feet from Buffalo's body which was lying in state, because hundreds of people were coming in to see Bob. And I was looking across his, his body, over into some very wide windows into the, into the light. And again my inner was raw, but very happy. But my heart was very sad. And I was sort of going boo-hoo, Bob had left us. I saw a sense face in the window. In his face, his smile was bigger than Chilande. Because I kind of realized he was on the other side. And they were having a ball waiting to receive Buffer. See, I was on this side, and it was extraordinary. There was no difference. I was here, crying, but my heart was crying as Buffer was leaving. There was Buffer. He was on his way. And there was his, I lost his remember. Delighted. I'm sure all the other fellows have gone to do before we have gone to wait until the on the other side. And there was no difference. There was just no difference from here to there. Except maybe it'd be a bit happier on the other side. Ah, that's a valid night. I don't know. To me the most important thing I think I heard about was death. Well, sometime before we died, he was talking to Mas Aji. He told me this. The Bapa said to Mas Aji, and I understand Aji meant that Bapa meant everybody, when he said this. He said, if we're good and clear, but when Bapa is gone, the Bapa could be more helpful to us and closer to us. So I guess if we can all be good and clear now, in our lives. This will happen. And I think this World Congress is probably one of the most significant events. Certainly in our lifetime, because it is the first time that we're holding a World Congress in purpose, not physically present. And we've got to get it right ourselves. We have the equipment to do it. We have no excuse not to do it. And on top of that, if we're good and clear, that will be there. Here we are at something called the Pacific Northwest Arts Camp. There are some typical people doing some art.
What is this? That uh, is on your face here. We're making masks. When it dries, we can. When it dries, we're gonna be able to take it off, and then we have a mask that we can always wear. Before they put your mask on, they put this yucky jelly stuff. Jelly Vaseline. It was real yucky. It's all cold. When the plaster comes on, you have to sit here in the sun and wait for a long time to get masks on. So why do you do that? I want a mask to make and decorate after we're done drying. Huh. So once you get it off your face, you're going to paint it and stuff like that, huh? Yeah, we're going to decorate it with feathers and glaze, I think. Or no, not glaze, paint and all sorts of stuff. Well, it looks kind of neat like it is. I know, but it would look neater if you get it in different colors. Yeah. So, who are you? Who'd you I'm say Patrick you were? Leeson. Patrick Leeson. And you are who? Morgan Snyder. So, is, how is it for you, Morgan, to put that thing on? I don't really like it, but the best thing about it is it feels good. Because it's really hot, and then it's cold in the, underneath. So, I think it feels good. Yeah. How have you been enjoying the camp so far? I think it's been pretty nice. What kind of thing do you like best about it? I think that it is having free time and going down to the creek and go fishing. You enjoyed that the best, huh? Mm -hmm. well, what about the art things? Yeah, I like those too. I like clay a lot. You made something in clay? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for talking to me. Let's follow along and see what they're doing to these other people here. Right, you have to make as many funny faces as you can. Go on, squash a bit harder. Out the other way. Stretch your face. No, stretch it. Stretch it. That's it. And put it up. Now wrinkle it like that. Really, really tight. Tighter. Tighter. Because you've got a bit here that's got to come off. Now stretch your face again. Stretch it again. Ow. So what, what are you doing to this poor person here? I'm trying to take all this off his face. It's like you're trying to torture this. Taking him out of pain. This is probably going to hurt him quite a bit. Actually, get a few screams on him because he's got a bit of pain in this. Scream. Make it a bit more exciting. And then put your head up for me. There you go. Ah, no, it's going to come off okay. Oh, no. Don't move, don't move. I've got all this stuff on. You've got, you've got to film one of the disasters now. He's okay. And that little bit. There you go. Yeah, you need to so how'd the mask turn out? None of it shows. Is that how you wanted it? Also like this one, when you wet it down, like it's wet enough. Showing your face, that's more interesting. <laughs> Pretty neat. <laughs> well worth it. Okay, what do I put it now? Okay, so if you put it over there with the rest of them so it can dry out. Mine done. If you don't, you start your other mask yet. Start your other one first. Mine done. Oh, I'm not going to do it right now, no. Let's start on the other one. Is mine done? Nice and cold. Yes. It is. Alright. Let me just... Wipe off my hands and I'll take it off. I told your Sumi teacher that you were going to be a little bit late. Can you wrinkle it up? Oh, you're good at this wrinkling business. You are. Look how fast it came off. Right. So is that okay? Yeah. Great. Yeah, I'm saving it too, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go and wash my face. Okay. 
followed your eyebrows, but as you will have no eyebrows left. Eyebrows. While you're doing this, why don't you tell me who you are? Who are these My name are? is Emma. I'm Patrice. <laughs> I'll film stop it. Okay, Emma, and you... what I'm doing is I'm putting Vaseline over her face so that when we put the plaster on it, it doesn't harm her skin. And then when we take it off, it doesn't pull all the hairs out of her face right off. Give her loads of pain. So I might not put too much Vaseline on. <laughs> to see I'm a little bit. Can't even see my mask. Do you know what kind of mask you want? Yeah, yeah. half one or half one. Is it supposed yeah. to look like this? Yeah. So we don't have to put it everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you sound like you have a little bit of an accent. Uh, are you from Southern California or something? No, I'm further away from that. I'm from Liverpool, okay, Liverpool in England. So what are you doing over here? Well, I've got an open, an open lamp in Subud, Ridge 1 in Louisiana. And I've come to stay for about three months. So I've just finished my exams and things. So I've come out to stay and to explore a bit. <laughs> so what do you think so far of this area? Great. Perfect. It's very pretty. It's nice and clean. And people are really friendly. So it's totally different from Liverpool. <laughs> totally different. The people are friendly in Liverpool, but it's not a very pretty place. So how did you get involved with this particular job here, putting masks on people's faces? Well, I've been, been in America for a week. I well, just met yeah, Delia in Virginia, and I also go for and kind of got friendly with them. And it's all cold. <clears> they were just about to go off to camp and said of me waiting to come back. I asked Suzanne if I could get on, and she said, Only if you're helping. And when I found out what they were doing, I realised that I'd just done it on my course, on an art and design course. So I decided to come out and give everybody a bit of pain. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. You look like you're enjoying it. I am. I am enjoying it. It's great putting all this stuff on other people's faces because they don't like it, you see. <laughs> and now we've got a close in. <laughs> oh, All this Vaseline right <laughs> in the trees. Hi. <laughs> Just catch the light on the grease. <laughs> so, why are you doing this? Going through this kind of torture? She loves it. Torches. Yeah. Torches it. <laughs> no. I want a mask. I call this. She wants a mask. That's about it. <laughs> In order to get beautiful things, you have to go through pain. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. And your name is Patricia? Patrice. Patrice. And where are you from, Patrice? Vancouver. 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 Okay. And, and you need to try to um, three layers all who do you, Whose parents are you? Evan and Latifah Brett. Huh. Okay. Okay. Well, good luck with your mask. Hope it turns out nice. Oh, it will do. See you later. Thanks. Okay, bye now. You're bye. Okay. You're starting this. Where's part. the water? Ashley. Thank you, Liz. Do you want me to do the face one now? I'm going to have a question. I can't open this. You told me not to spray it. Yeah. Spray it. Okay, well this may not work, like I said. Oh, Rosada, really tell me what you're doing here. We're trying to spray paint. Piece of paper. Can you open this? Okay. Now you have to, if you get real close, it makes it too watery, and it's not like a spray anymore. Let me shake it. Okay, let's try it over here. You're right, it does move it, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. It just may not work. Okay, this is too, um... Is that on your finger? No, I think this, ooh, is that pretty though? Mine got lovely too. It was Me too, blue. Where's the pink? Mm -hmm. Oh, now there's the kind of leaves you need. Oh, that's what you need, Matthew. There, that's enough. It won't, it won't stay yeah, down. It won't work too if you Yeah, around. no, it just moves down. Yeah, yours is too wide, but Doesn't I think the it, oh, look cool. cool. Yeah. Let me, let me see the blue. Yeah. 
Wait, wait. Oh, that should have worked. Probably. It worked. Yeah, I need to do a was, soda. Though. See, that's, that's... Mine worked. If you need to do it, then get another wow. one. Wow. That's neat, isn't it? Yeah. Excuse me, Rosada. Yeah. Are you the one that has all those shirts in my mouth? Yeah. You're back. Come here, Henry. Yes, Rockman. Tell me a little bit about yourself here. Not yourself, Rockman? Yeah. Uh, well, Who are you? Uh, Henry Cultist. I ride bicycles, climb rocks. Um, I'm a counselor here at Subway Camp 88. I'm trying to find t shirts at the moment. I should probably run up and get some now, so uh, take care, Rockman. Okay. <laughs> How much? Well, finally, um, $2 a piece. Take a little care. Hi, Rocky. Hi, Rocky. You cannot this is what we're teaching now? kids at the art camp, how to spray paint on walls. That's right, training our teenagers. And we are teaching them at a very early age here. No, this was hers. That was hers. Yours is over there. Hey, what are you doing here? Why don't, why don't you have them tell their name? Louisa, stop and tell Rockman your name. Oh, don't get that close. Louisa, what are you doing there? I am spray painting. And what is the purpose of that? What's the purpose of spray painting? Okay, do one more thing, okay? Here's the next group of potential spray painters eager to get in there and do the job. Yes, that's me, all right. Uh, the thong is my beautiful piece of art. I dedicate this to the oil. Who are you? Well, my hair is really messy. Yeah, but who are you? I'm Ariana. Ariana who? What? Okay, who has the group? Are you enjoying the camp, Ariana? Okay, I want to give him a chance. Do you think uh, this spray paint, painting for kids is a good idea? Yes. Is it fun? Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. wait a minute. I know. She had this is okay, yellow. Patrick. This Who is are you? yellow. Me? Yes. No. Rosada. Yeah. This is yellow. On a tray. Yeah. Are you enjoying this uh, spray yes. painting? You think all kids like spray painting? Huh? You think all kids like spray painting? Of course. Yeah. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> Why would they be doing this pretty on the tree? I need more. Well, this is an interesting structure. Hi. Now this looks like someone I met before. Is this Patrice? Mm -hmm. This is your mask, huh? Yeah, sort of. Looks pretty neat. I can't, I can't see it. So what are you going to do once it dries? Put a stick on the side so you can just like real movies kind of things. Uh, oh, pretty neat. Okay, see you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> how are you doing, Daniel? There was a four in my almost question. Uh, so how are you doing with this painting here? Yeah. About ready for some more colors?
Why don't you tell me what it is? It's pretty neat. What's going on here? Sumi attempts. Sumi attempts. Well, some of them are. Some of theirs are more than attempts. Who did this one right here? Andrea and I. Oh. I will keep the newspaper. You can put it over the corner. Over in that side of that piece. You need to load your brush better. I know, I know. I've totally lost it. Okay, let's do it. What? I mean, for your first attempt? What should I Um, you can give it to me. <laughs> um, what do you want this water? And the water, dirty water you can go out on the grass. Andrea? Yes. What? Give me a little bit of an explanation of what's going on here. We are all attempting on the third period when everyone is rather tired to uh, do some sumi painting and we're learning how to paint bamboo. Bamboo? Huh? Yeah. And bamboo is one of the um, best exercises because it teaches you how to hold the brush and how to load the brush and how to, uh, what pressure to put on the brush to make the various strokes. Can you That's show me a part. sample of what the kids have been doing? Of what they've been doing? Yeah. Sure. Let's look at yours. Let me show you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 See, this is the uh, stalk of the bamboo. Oh. So the brush is loaded in three uh, colors. You call it color, but values, dark, light and middle and dark and that's all on one brush hmm. and the stroke is all made with one stroke and, the, and these are the knots in the bamboo joints and Rebecca did that Rebecca really neat, huh? yeah. Isn't that first attempt first attempt and then we do these later hmm. push and up and push again it's so different from a watercolor brush because it's not springy and you expect yeah. it to spring. Well, it should be springy. Oh, I haven't heard that they this weren't supposed to be springy. Well, a little bit better. A little bit more than this. Try that brush. Okay. Andrea, would you just tell me who you are just for the camera, just so people know? I'm Andrea Maynard. And I am a semi painter. From the from Seattle. From Seattle. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and who's this lady over here? I'm Rachel Amos from Boulder. You're kind of far away from home, huh? Yeah. So what got you up to the Pacific Northwest? This particular camp. Just wanted to come and be a teacher here. That's right. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Glad to see. And, come and see what it was like in this part of the country. You think you might want to move up here? Yes. A lot of people are. In, in a year, I'm going to have the opportunity. Oh, good. To move. Good. Okay, see you next year then. Okay. If not sooner. It'll seem like soon. That's an interesting thing you're doing there, Andrea. Well, this, these plates we're using for pellets, and they're very strange because they have a lot of. Um, they have a lot of oil on them or something, you know, plastic. Mm -hmm. So they don't, um, I'm just rinsing it off. Think They're not perfect to Okay, I'll see you later. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Uh, so they may be moving uh, everything up by about 15 minutes. So they're uh, trying to get up. Maybe if you stand up. Let's move this bench, Patricia, and have you stand up. I think you'll have a better uh, aim. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Mm. Oopsie. Whoops. Okay, we can always do another one. Let's, let's try and get the paper over. Whoa! Rachel, what are you doing? Where's I did your, it. 
Okay, let's see. I think you probably got too much. Yeah, yep. too much. Okay, this time. This isn't spring. Okay, it may be gone then. Okay, let's try that one. So is this where our young graffiti artists come from? Trained at a very early age? I want to use white so then you can see it better. Oh, that is neat. Wow. Okay, let's do one more color on this, uh, Patricia. I know, I like it. Let's see if there is another color. Yeah. Sonia, right, the yes. where are you going? On the grass. On the grass? Yes. Have you been enjoying this camp? Yes. Watch out for mouth. Tell me who you are and where you're from. Okay, my name is Sonia Hubbard. I'm from Bobble, Washington, and I'm 11. And that's all. That's all? That's all. <laughs> Want it? Who is it? Bracelet. Who is it? I don't know. Someone else with a mask, huh? No. Who are you? Mandria. And what's your last name? Brett. All right, you have the same name as someone else. My sister's yeah. sisters. Ah. You have the same kind of masks? Ugh. Pardon? You have the same kind of masks no. or different? They're different. Okay. They both have masks. Okay, I'm looking forward to seeing them once they're done. More spraying here. Show him your gold leaves. <laughs> and now I'm going to use this. Okay. That's pretty neat. I made a butterfly. Look at an inchworm. An inchworm is on her butterfly. Can I go to this to my mom? Yeah. That's one. Don't touch it with any Show it to me, Louisa. 
Huh? Show it to me too. Bring it over here. Let me see it close up. All you need to do is uh, like that. So what is that? It's a well, I spray painted this leaf. Mm -hmm. Look at it. It's now I'm going to go show my mom it. Look at it. Okay, see ya. Look at it. Look at a little thing. Hey. What is that? The worm. A worm? Yeah. Point it. Point to it. Right there, huh? It's a little tiny worm. Yeah. Watch out! Whoa! Whoa! That's pretty good, huh? Because you know there's a secret passage that goes all the way under the whole village, right into the dragon's nose. What is, what is this thing here you guys are building? A village of the clay. <laughs> right now I'm making the Tower of Doom. What's that thing right here? Who knows what I'm making? A lightning rod. That thing to the right of you. Yeah, yeah, that's a ticket of a lightning rod. This? Yeah. Who are you? I'm E-Man. E-Man who? Plusha. Plusha. How old are you? Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. So what are you doing there, man? What's what are you making? I'm making a lightning rod. Lightning rod, yeah. huh? Bro, okay. what, what day is it today, though? And yeah. you down there at the end, who are you? Owen. Owen what? Salisbury. Well, you're you're a long way from home, aren't you? About six hundred miles. No, more, more. like seven hundred. More. Okay, eight hundred. Yeah, yeah, somewhere around there. And right now I'm making a tower. So don't ask me anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you're in the movies, you gotta... Ask him. <laughs> Rob making Rambo 68. No. <laughs> the all good have died. Yep. And this is a grenade. You know what happens when I pull the test? <laughs> it goes bang. I think. Oh. I'm gonna make it a grenade. I'm gonna make a flagpole with a flag. Someone do a flag. Mine doesn't. Hi. Okay, who are you? What are you doing, Luther? Making. Uh, a knife holder for my knife. Oh, knife flat. holder for your knife? Okay, well. Out of stone? Yeah. I know. Why not? I mean, this. Okay. The artwork over there on the ground, on the grass. Quality. Well, Got show it to me. Come on. Show you my hands, too. stuff. Okay. And what are those? Well, basically That's self-explanatory. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> got some underwear and I got the t-shirt there. Okay. Tell me who you are though. You know who I am. Why don't you guys get together so I can get a picture of you? Okay. Virginia? Yeah? What are you doing there? I'm dyeing my t shirt. Bob's about to do another handprint on it. 
That's pretty neat. That's an interesting design there. This is my daughter Virginia, who's visiting from San Francisco. And this is Robert, her friend, who also came up with her. Ooh, that looks good. We just made another imprint. Pretty neat. Should I put one on my chest? No. I want to do another prince with this. How are you guys enjoying this camp? How are you enjoying the camp? It's pretty fun. Having a good time. It's great. It's good. How's it going, Marius? This Henry. is before you is my first endeavor as a sculptor. What do you think? Yes, Risque, I know. This is Mike's girlfriend. Wow. Henry, that is impressive. Thank you. I'm fond of it. I've been working on it since. The little woman. The little woman. Just polishing up a few last bits on it, then I'm gonna uh, see if I can put it in the, the kiln. Probably not, it's too thick. No, maybe I'll just put it in the house. <laughs> I think the Subit house would be a very appropriate place to put it. Looks neat. Thank you. What you got going over here, man? It's a French bracelet. Is this, uh, what is that you're doing there? I'm making a French bracelet for Goliath. For who? Goliath. You're Matthew Ward, is that right? Yep. You've been enjoying the camp, Matthew? Oh yeah, I'm having a great time. It's a blast. So you're gonna get into our, uh, gonna have another <laughs> volleyball game tonight, and we need you. You're a valuable player. Oh, you think so? <laughs> oh yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You're not just saying that to appease the old man. No, right? no, no, man. You were in there against some good shots, and definitely better than I was doing last night, man. I don't know what was going on, but I had a lousy volleyball evening. Well, Henry, I am really quite impressed with your artwork here. Thank you. I'm surprised. I've never really had a go at this before. I've done some carvings and things, but not sculpting. Did you have a model for this? Um, about three months ago, just kind of from, from memory. That's a good memory. <laughs> so I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was I heard laughing over there. <laughs> this looks like Rosada Chun. Yes, it is. Hello. Hi. How are you doing, Rosada? Very good, thank you. How are you? Good. So what are you doing here? Fabric painting. Painting my lingerie. Painting your lingerie, huh? Are you going to... Model this for us once you get it all painted. Maybe underneath something. It's pretty neat. It should be. What are you doing down in LA right now? Unless I'm not in LA. Are you not? Where are you? <laughs> I'm in Washington. Oh. I didn't know I was going to be here until Stefan and Shawnee Camp's wedding. Mardia asked me to replace her. She's become, had an overnight, like, massive success. And she's opening up a store on Melrose. And so, 
It's by his bike. So this is Mardia Gleason you're talking about? Yes, Mardia Gleason. And so this is what she was going to be doing here. And um, and she just didn't have enough time to be able to do everything. She couldn't be in two places at once. So the store is really important. And she asked me to cover for her hair. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm having fun doing it. Oh, good. Right now is rest time. So all the everyone's in their cabins resting. So I get to play now. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. You can turn that off now. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Today. What are you guys arguing about there? She says I'm running and I don't need to. I am so she can be hard, right? Do you want to beat somebody up? No. No way. If you burn, we beat you up. Hey, Louisa, is that water cold? Say yes. Deanna. Yeah? Gotta get the inner tube up. You guys got them up quick now. What's her name? Said so because you guys took them early and she didn't even know No, we, heard, we thought we heard the bell ring. Oh, you guys yeah, thought wrong. Water. And anyways, you got the inner tubes first that last time. <laughs> yeah, yesterday you got them before the bell rang. No, we didn't. She did. Yes, you did. Oh, yes, you did. How's it going? Oh, it's going pretty well so far. I'm not sure I have enough, but overall, I'd say it's doing pretty well. So it's being profitable. Definitely. So is this your own personal enterprise, or is this? Uh... Yeah, this is all coming to me. Well, I'm splitting it with my partner Danielle Gleason. Yes, me. That's her. So you're providing a service to the kids and making a profit at the same exactly. time. Huh? Right. right in the spirit of the old American capitalist system. Huh? Right, the American dream. So do you have enough stock for all the kids? Well, yesterday is really fast, but if the rest of the day is still like this, I'm sure it will. This is a lot slower. Okay. Would you like to buy anything? Well, I'm sure I will later on, but okay. right now I'm, I'm going to try to resist all those tempting things. Now, is this your partner coming in over here? Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you get involved with this, Daniela? I told him that I'd help him out. <laughs> I thought that was pretty fair. Pretty good deal, huh? Yeah. We're making pretty good profits, too. Is this your sister here? This is Oriana. Hello, Oriana. Are so, you you buying something, Oriana? Yes. Yeah. Don't over here. Five? <laughs> What are, what are those things? Gummy worms? Gummy worms. Why would anybody buy something like that? Maria loves them. Because they're very good. This is good. For you. Good. Okay. 
What are you doing, Raina? What is that? This is a Zen exercise and patience. I thought someone was doing Pilates. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. I did. She is. She is Gaelic. This is a Zen exercise, and if I have the patience to disentangle this, I can remain camp director. Great. And you can even you? remain calm. Huh? Yeah. He'll take over when you. Linda Plush has given this to me. This is my assignment. Oh, it's a bubble thing, huh? Yeah. This is ridiculous, oh, yeah. though. Try to put children in a bubble later. You can come watch that, and then we'll float them off. What do you think of the camp so far? How's it been going? I think it's great. Everybody seems to be having a good time, and everyone is working real hard and producing beautiful, beautiful things. Now ask these guys what they think. They're they're really into it. I'm just looking at everybody. I think it's been doing great. We love it. You love it? I love it. What part of it do you love? Oh, everything. Um, I mean like the art part in particular? Yeah? Yeah. Fabric dyeing. So you like and making your own clothes, huh? Yep. And I like that clean up. You like clean up? I love it. Good. Um, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like swimming in the nice warm oh. deep lake. Oh, wait, river. She's being ironic. River. Let's, let's be aware of this. This is a little irony. No, no, no. I really like these things. I really do. I and I like playing volleyball. Yeah. Patrice here is really good. <laughs> Powerhouse server into the bushes down the down the hill. Um. Oh, Rockman, I really hate it when you're doing this. I have a question for you, Delia. All right. How come when we're playing volleyball, you always knock the ball to me? <laughs> you're just trying to make me look bad or something? Is, it, is that why I made count them ten points in a row single-handedly because they went straight to you? Why I won the game? Because you couldn't return? Is huh. that it? No, I returned some of those. I really don't try to. Which one? I don't. It's just where I, you must have been positioned in the spot where I always hit you. Ha <laughs> <laughs> I'll just remember that next time and I'll aim towards you. Okay, I'll be ready for you the next time. Okay. Tonight. <laughs> okay. Alright. <laughs> I can't believe I did it. Who's this young lady Rockman, over here? I haven't I got her on video yet. Who is this young lady? This is Heidi McKay. Heidi McKay? Yep. And where are you from, Heidi? Uh, Langley. Langley? Just outside of Vancouver, yeah. Canada, huh. BC. A lot of Canadians down here, huh? We all came together. Hey, lots of Canadians, eh? <laughs> hmm. Out and about. Out and about. Are you guys coming to the family camp? No, we were going to, but we just don't have enough time. We have to work, etc. Uh, okay, we'll give our love back in Canada all the Canadians there. We're there. What music is this we're listening to? Sinead O'Connor. Is that an Irish group or an Irish yeah, singer? an Irish lady. Hmm. Quite interesting music. Yeah, it's really good. It's really nice. It's haunting. I really like it. It did sound like loud. I really thought that's what it was over there. I was like, they are loud. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear us one? No, but I thought we, are we going to have one tonight? Um, do I have you been watching? Yeah, let's ask some help for us. Because I just asked some people yesterday. You did? I did put all the ends together. I didn't know that because I wanted to. Well, it wasn't a, a major thing. You could just do that. Well, I do a few people. Bye. 
didn't mean to do that, but, mm -hmm. but still, it's still. But, but he stopped her from looking in the mirror so much, didn't he? With that funny picture. Okay, what's the name of the story? The last story, tooth. Right. I love the story. And what color is that tooth? Yeah, because it's supposed to be like a gold tooth. One day when George was skating to Martha's house, he tripped and fell, and he broke off his right front tooth. His favorite tooth, too, because he only has two teeth. <laughs> Look, everything, his hat goes flying. Who do you think the flowers were for? Martha. Right, right. And what did he trip on? The sidewalk. You see what's in the sidewalk? Mm -hmm. It's a crack in the sidewalk. It's probably it's not, uneven. It's not safe. No. When he got to the Martha's, George cried his eyes out. Oh, dear me, he cried. I look so funny without my favorite tooth. There, there, said Martha. Look at their little eyes, see what she said. He, he looks like a baby. Yeah, he does with one tooth. That's right. The next day, George went to the dentist. The dentist replaced George's missing tooth with a lovely gold one. That's Buck McTooth, dentist. <laughs> when Martha saw George's lovely new golden tooth, she was very happy. George, she exclaimed, you look so handsome and distinguished with your new tooth. And George was happy, too. That's what friends are for, he said. They always look on the bright side and they always know how to cheer you up. But also, I'll tell you the truth, said Martha with a smile. As they're going out for a walk, he's got his tie on, his little hat. It's a pretty hat she has. <laughs> And that's the name of George and Martha. What are they do it, doing here? Putting on the teacher's daughter. Mmm, like her shoes. Yeah. There are lots of George and Martha books. I know. Mm -hmm. Look at the book. Maybe we could do the play. Maybe yeah. we could practice it. Who's this young lady here? <laughs> Marcella Salisbury, don't make me laugh or smile because this thing will come off. Are you not supposed to move your mouth or anything? Is it so? Well, I can move my mouth, but I can't smile because my cheeks bunch up. So if I were to tell you a joke or something right now and make you smile, then that would mess up the mask? Don't. <laughs> You're messing up right now. Okay, I'll go away and leave you alone. Uh, See you later. Uh -huh. 
dirty strip that you do. It's faster that way. You're making a mask, huh, Daniel? Trying to. This stuff is so gooey. I'm just doing it. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> is that working okay? I'm dripping it already. Yeah. Yeah. Come back at 5 o'clock and see if it's fried. It should be. If it is, go over it. Out the, if it is, you need to dig out the clay. But there won't be. Um, no, this is going to work in the end. Do you sign it? I can do it in the end. I'm looking forward to the next. It's the decoration part of it. I'll be the best at it. Thank you. Don't ask me to work this dry. Did you really come here last year? No, you tried it all in one minute. All of them. All the layers. All the layers. I have bubbles next, so I think I can be late to that. Yeah, you can be late to bubbles. I'm going to get this finished. Okay, Ariana, you're not quite getting them wet enough, love. You're just, you, you need to put a little more water on and see if you can get the top. Oh. Okay. Oh. Is this a casualty of the camp here? Yeah, his flu. Pretty tired. Pretty sick. Why? He's taking a few naps. Right. I hope you get better, Daniel. Or not Daniel Ryan. Yeah. Too many names. It's all that soccer, huh, Ryan? Go ahead and work out. Should go for you. Then you just start working on the center, on the corner, not the back. Go like this. Get your hands wet. Okay. Put them on there. Put the one hand like this. Okay. You can scoot over here. Okay. okay. And brace that one out here or on your knee, so it's more comfortable. Okay. And you're going to take this hand, turn it up a little, okay. and come this way. This way? Like this. See how I do it? No. And this way, and pull it in towards this hand. And you're going to squeeze it in towards your hand, your bracing hand. Let's keep one hand braced and use the other one hand to push it in. Okay, let me show you again, and then you, you do exactly what I did. Like this, and come like this. Oh, awesome. Let's get that down here. Up like this. Yeah. Okay. But keep your hand real tight together because if you go like that, you'll really claw the clay and make a mess. Okay? Okay. 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 Oops. It's going to go off. Uh oh. Stop the wheel. Oh no. How much of it came off? It's hot bite. And you just ripped it up? I'm going to try to stick it back down. Alright, let's try it. Let's <laughs> see if we can save this baby, huh? I hope you got that on film. <laughs> we did. What is the point of doing this? What do you do with this type of thing? You're trying to center the pot so that it's balanced and spinning cleanly in a clean circle without wobbling anywhere. This makes it easier to make the pot and lines up the walls so that they lines up the clay so that when you do get it going, the walls will be even. Okay. You gotta keep it moist. As soon as it starts drying, it'll pull apart like that. That's what happened, yeah. It's not like So keep just grabbing the sponge and dunking it. Oh. I'll be back in a second. Okay, it's definitely gonna feel something. Okay. Just the first time you've done this? Yeah, I'm trying to get it right. Get some moisture. Get your bag ready. Put it in the bag and squirt a little water on it. It's gonna make a cone. Turn the bag. Looks like it's not as easy as it seems, huh? No, it looks really easy. Keep working on that during the day in your free time. Uh, work, but you will need gushy. to put a plastic bag over it to keep it workable. Otherwise, it will dry up and you won't get any material. That comes apart. I don't like that. Here, there's two other buckets. Yeah. Look, look.
solution is newer. See if you notice the difference between the new solution and the older. Okay, let me try this old solution. Yeah, it's usually better. But in all, the, this is the only new solution in that one. See, I can only make new solution when I get an empty milk bottle. You gotta keep drinking milk so I can have more bottles. How do you make okay, you have to the, the old solution is better. Yeah, it is better. See, all the others are all one of new. Look at that one! Lissana, what do I do with my... It's just a glycerin and Dawn soap. And water. What is this? Come on, come over here. Yeah, and she added nitro. Not uh, nitro. Just take this, dip it in. Whoops. Lissana? Here, Move your hands. Look at that! <laughs> There's a bubble going right through the Rockman. What? Old solution's okay. way better. Okay, so we've got a what? Oh, great. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that one! Trade with you, Patrick. I got out this little bubble in there. Look at that guy. Is that a rabbit and how it blows up? No. Don't so the pockets. Gwen is here. She's going to be late. She's working on her mouth. Oh, okay. And Heidi. Here we go. Where's Heidi? Go. Heidi. Oh, my. There. Uh, Heidi, look at the Look at that one. There we go. Really interesting. It's like, it's a you have to close them off. I do. Can we do that today? Yeah, it's like oh, look at that one. If I have, you know what I'm going to try? If I have enough solution to, to make it, we're going to do that. Yeah. But after I've poured it, it's going to be hard to get it back out. If you soap it up, it won't work as well. Use the launcher. Heidi. The launchers work great. Heidi, yeah. Really? Yeah. She's yeah. supposed to be in there. Battle of the <laughs> dueling video recorders. <laughs> I win. <laughs> Wonderful, David. Look at those colors. Okay, there's another bucket over here, too. Is it old? Yeah. There's four buckets. What is it? Sand. Who are you? Flora. Everyone knows who I am. Flora who? Flora McNeil. Where are you from, Flora? Chico. Chico? Yeah. How come your that. face looks like that when you say Chico? Have you ever Chico. been there? Chico? Yes. Yeah. You don't like it? No. kind of like it. It's all right. What it's didn't you like about it? It's dusty and it's dry and it's full of people in cowboy boots. Yeah, this is true. Some, some parts. Yeah, some parts. So what do you do in Chico? What do I do? Mm -hmm. Oh, you live there? Yeah. Oh. You, how about like Chico State? 
It's okay. I'm not going to call him. Oh, because like a friend that just went, moved up there, he says it's great. You know, the beers are cheap. And, you know, everybody goes out and has Number one party school, you know. USA. But, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't that on the like yeah. this night? Right. I mean, so how could you go wrong? Now tell me. Well, it's not a party school anymore. Why? It's like dead now. Because, okay, the reason it was party school, I can't believe I'm explaining this on camera, is because there was this thing called Pioneer Days, and it's like a nine day long party. Right. But they canceled it last year. Last year they did? Yeah, because we had a riot. Oh, yeah, I heard it's getting so, kind of out of hand. So, they canceled it. Now we have this thing called Rancho Chico Days in this big wagon. But in a I could leave it It's totally out. phony. Yeah. It's completely weak, so. Yeah. Oh, well. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> Now that we know all about Chico's state, uh, what about you? Hold on, man. I gotta go through What about me? Your life. When you live in Chico, you don't have a life. Is that good enough? Anything else you want to know? I can't wait till you watch this. I know. It's always so embarrassing. You look at yourself on camera and it's like, oh, no. Don't sit there and look at me. What do you want to know? Oh, I can't think of any other questions. Well, then interview Robert. No. Interview Delia. He's done me a few times already. I'm stuck. I'm stuck here and he has his camera on me and I can't go back to drawing because I'm going to draw when I draw. <laughs> well, ask yourself some questions. I don't have any questions for myself. Why, why are you sitting there? I want to figure out what I'm going to draw my next camera. I'm going to do it with. Is that a good enough question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't oh, do something. Your father's sitting there. <laughs> this is gonna be so funny when you watch it. I hope he doesn't have it on and he's just doing this to psych me out. Yeah. <laughs> You're a better person. You I'm sitting person. there smiling <laughs> away. <laughs> Was it on? Yeah, all the time. Um, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it was like completely zoomed in and down zoomed in. So what would you say your favorite class is so far? What, hold my way. Face towards the camera? Can I turn around so we can see your face? I have to turn around. I'm squishing the clay. Squish it in your arm. <sighs> no. I've been told there's been a bit of dissension about not having like caffeine things like uh, yeah. too many classroom made. Not every time. What do you think? We have too many classes, not enough free time. Not enough caffeine. Not enough caffeine? Not enough cigarettes? Caffeine. I'm not complaining about cigarettes. I mean, obviously they're not supposed to supply them for us, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. So I, the classes I've been talking to a couple of people do kind of run. There's what, we have six classes during the day, seven? Right. I think we should start later. In the morning? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what time? Ten. Oh. Uh, I think ten's a bit out of bounds. I say nine, nine thirty. Getting up at nine, nine thirty? No, the class yeah. starts. Yeah. Start. Big start. That's when they start. <laughs> Big go <boogie> ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you ask your questions when I'm. Oh right, I'm sorry. So you made any new friends yet at camp? I know I have. Yeah, I was just kidding. Mm. Oh, closely bonded with all buddies like yes. Quinn here. Yeah. I think at any rate, so uh, this is your first sip of the camera. You go ahead and smell okay. it on there. Are you being a counselor? I don't want to make yeah. a mistake. Counseling I'll stunt. You last make night, girl. last night I was sitting here, it was around 11.30, and two of the boys well, came down from the, what, the 12, 12 year old cabin, and they asked me to go up to and tell the other boys to be silent because they were trying to get to sleep. So I trudge on up through the grass, get up there, and all the lights were out. It seems they, they had tied they had tied a rope across the door at ankle level to trip me when I came hey, in. It almost Little buggers. worked. Almost worked, but you needed to tie the rope a bit no, further back. <laughs> and wake up with hot tie down your throat. Simon yeah. didn't know how to tie it. Any rate, it's been all right so far. So, uh, who does your hair? Who does my hair? Yeah. Nobody. Absolutely nobody. I sleep on it, and I get up, and I come to class. Oh, well, no, it's been a pleasure no, talking to you. We're going to wander off and hit up some of mm. Have fun. Okay. And uh, we'll come back and see what you're making. Mm. We're just asking a few questions like, what, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> this well, uh, this is off the program here. But, uh, yeah. At any rate, I'm assuming this is this is uh, fabric tying you got yourself into. It's a nice shirt, and you have those underwear on. I saw you making it. Uh, no, not yet. Oh, you can't show it to us. No, well, you can show us the <laughs> Wait, wait till something. tonight. We'll come back for this special. Anyway, so what do you think so far? I have the full. Got an, got an overall on the camp so far for us. 
Well, uh, well, basically, <laughs> it's pretty. Don't be shy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I've enjoyed myself. Yeah, except for the early morning rising kind of thing. There. Yeah, trudging down. Uh, some of us get to sleep all day, but we are others... warm back there where he's got his yeah, cabin. Exactly. Actually, it was pretty warm last night, and I slept pretty, pretty decently. Yeah, when you first arrived, I wasn't sure who you were. I thought perhaps you would just hit a. I don't to know. Hang out, kind to, of like thing. Yeah. Or just. There's some Council or something, I wasn't sure. I thought you had like a special duty in mind. You seemed very into something, I wasn't sure what it was. Just, just hit a be cool. Ask the other questions on the list here. Uh, here, you, you're, let's, come on, you, you need to know how it is. I'm just going around in circles. Okay, <laughs> what's your name? Okay, you didn't what's even do name? the first one here. Sorry. Yeah, I asked him what it is. Well, I think that's a. Well, but do you have these? Things? Okay, what's your name? Robert C. Bishop Jr. Okay, and where are you from, Robert? San Francisco, California. And what are your interests? What What do you like doing? Watching the stars at late at night. Anything other than that? Well, I like to throw a few chords on my guitar once in a while. Things perhaps in tune with what we're doing here at camp. Uh, getting my hands. Completely <laughs> filthy. <laughs> and getting a lot of bites. Yeah, so you might have one of these. Yeah. Okay, Robert, why are you here? Um, uh, that's a good question. How it comes across. I basically don't know. <laughs> Just friends okay. told you it was no. happening. Do you Virginia, eat red meat? I came here with Virginia. Okay, how's that? Thank you. Next, uh, no, I next don't question even. on this, <laughs> you eat red meat, okay. <laughs> we got that established. What happened to our interviewer here? He, I'm being taught how to interview. I was, oh, I see. I was jumping about. I, I personally liked his uh, reaction like his, to... Okay, I'm going to... You know, sitting down casually. Yeah, so you guys got okay. me up standing So around. what kind of music what do you is this? You, uh, you mentioned you played the guitar. Did you bring one with you? Guys? Yes, I did. You did bring right, one with right. you. And we, there will be a campfire where um, Brockman and I will play. We also have a gentleman, Matthew, who has a violin. I'm told he's very good. I know, and would exactly. Like to get together he, with you. he came up to me last night and asked if uh, I could help him with some ear. chords. I would we'll die in my ear, too. <laughs> in our cabin, ah. So, what, uh, what classes have you chosen? I really didn't choose any. Have you just kind of ended up and just yeah, kind of wondering I'm about what no one? Out. I'm here. What's your favorite so far, would you say? So far, to die, of course. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, yeah. You've really been getting into that. I was watching you when I, I was down I love there. It. You were just I having love a blast it. rolling away at the old time. And wait till tonight with the underwear. Special <laughs> clips of the underwear. <laughs> now, now, be honest with us, uh, Bob. What improvements would you say we could make with the camp? I mean, as it stands at the moment. All right. Well, basically, the, the later sleep would definitely <laughs> save my afternoons. I mean, I've been. I just sipped down about 20 cups of coffee just to make it to this day. So, you know, an extra hour, I think, would be suitable. Yeah, you get up around 7.30, some Well, I woke up at 7 this morning, so around 8 would be Yeah, nice. 8 would be nice. Yeah, you know, maybe that's a little late, but, you know. How about the food? What do you think so far? I mean, I've, Marius is just a saint for doing what he's doing, but right, right. up to this point, we've had some unusual dishes. Quite. <laughs> the the little weenies <laughs> cut up in, in, in water, I think it was, or boiled water. <laughs> Good one, there. I'm not sure what that was floating around the bottom of the pan, but it was... <laughs> exactly. No, I, for instance, I don't eat red meat, so I didn't really care for that one anyways, but the tuna fish sandwich was all right. I got in there. I'm more into natural foods, but the chips, I did have a bag of those, too. Yeah, so uh, you were thinking of joining us in a, a killer volleyball match tonight. We're going to have another one. Yeah, guaranteed. Sounds good. Ruckman okay. here, as, as you, you might already know, is uh, he the uses Northwest head. Regional he, He's got his secret champion. weapon, his head. <laughs> and we're going to have him on our team <laughs> soon. <laughs> he played a vicious game last night. I played a lousy game last night. Uh, stick around for that. We'll have... Uh, how did Your the producers get into this whole thing? I thought we were going to okay, produce let's this. Practice well, yeah, let's, okay, let's go. Was get that some kind of an idea of what people's reactions to the camp this year, 88, are so far? So, Rockman, um, first off, what varied interests do you have that have shown up in camp this year? What? What, what, what interests do you personally have that have shown up in, in the things to do we have at camp this year? Uh, I 
can't say as I've had any. No? Have you been participating in any of the, the, the group? Little, is it only how we had the paper making? No puttery back here. No. No, I've just been kind here. of helping out. The puttery back here. <laughs> For instance. Yeah, so, uh, okay. I'm assuming you're part of... Are you, would you consider yourself part of the staff? Uh, a counselor? I'm kind of a floater. Yeah. No, I just fit in wherever I'm envious. I needed. Yeah. I'm in charge of the, the boys myself, and it's hectic little buggers. At any rate, uh, have you been to other camps, Rockman? Yes. All uh, SYA camps? No, just family camps. Yeah? Kinds of family camps. How do you say this camp compares so far this year? Uh, I, I can't compare it because it's more, more of a, a limited kind of camp. It's focused on artistic things. And yes. So it's very different from the other camps I've been to. Yeah, I can see. I mean, we are, we have our days packed up. I've spoken to some other people, and a couple of people feel we should just have a bit more, an extra, another free period, or a lengthier free period. Maybe just cut out one of the, the one-hour classes. Just because there is so many things we can do here. We have the river, and we have the sports, and we have. The nature here we are at in uh, Cascade Meadows. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about that? Do you think? Well, it, it, to me, it does seem a little too. Well, it's it's hard to say for kids because sometimes kids need yeah need more organization, organization and more of a format. For them. The older kids it probably would be better to have it a little bit looser. But the, the way it seems so far, it's not that imperative. If you want the class, there, there isn't a real stink about it. If you found something else to do, you're really enjoying it. So, yeah. it's not too bad. The food, however, we discussed earlier, could take a brief step up. I'm not sure what we had, what was that last, yesterday's lunch, it was, kind of resembled plastic on bread, but I'm too real close. And he's up. For instance, I had kind of a hard time today taking um, a, Stephen, I think his name is, the little boy in the wheelchair to, to go fishing. We couldn't get, we had to argue and argue to get an extra 20 minutes. Daniel. Just, Daniel, I'm sorry. Just to, uh, just to go fishing up the road with his mother and with a couple other boys. Uh, it, just a, a little bit, I don't know, I'm not sure. Who, do you, who is the direct, uh, the supervisor of the camp? Raina. Your son, I guess. Raina. Is it Raina? Are you recording now? Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to be the camera person, <laughs> not participating in this. So, so Bob, um, we thought <laughs> perhaps we'd, we'd rely on you to, to scope out some potential... Uh, what then we'll answer in turn. We've just been wondering about getting uh -oh. interviews on what... Oh. We can go now? Ask yeah. away. We've just been wondering about taking interviews with people and what they think of the camp so far this year. I think a good start would be, uh, what, what is this? <laughs> This t-shirt, let's get, let's get an angle on this t-shirt here. I really like this t-shirt a lot. Yeah, you haven't seen the fan. Is this just kind of a creative spurt or is this something? Um, I think they look like amoebas. <laughs> well, it's something that I had drew before, but I just thought I'd copy it back onto here. It's very nice, we like it. So, okay. uh, this year, we were wanting, what have you done with your free time mostly? We have all our art classes and such. What, what have you been doing with your free time? Um, okay. I run for the shower and smoke. Yeah, any classes that you like to kind of dabble with when you don't have to do anything else? Um, pottery. Those are really neat. Um, they are. I've done, I did some for, um, I don't know, I write in my space. Page page one, yeah. You know what I would like to, uh, perhaps see, you know, is there anything you could actually show? Is it over a person? I sure did, because I was thinking that I've written. Yeah. 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 It is, but it's very All right, and we won't ask. So what do you think of the food so far at camp? We've had the, the all complaint. It's, yeah, well, well, we'll skip that question for the time being. It's probably not. You don't want me to be honest there. <laughs> all right. That's all right. Uh, have you been to other uh, SYA camps, or is this your first? Come out. This is my first. Did you, just, did you, come to, you came down with the bread, didn't you? Did they uh, warn you against it? Did they just say, come on, we've got a great time for you. Come on. Um, no, I really want to go. That's good then. So have you, uh, this, this is Bob, our producer over here. Hello, Bob. Have you met Bob before? No. Bob, no, Michelle, I Michelle, this is Bob. This, this we have Delia over here as well. Introduction. Go for it. What you Shake got going hands. back there, Delia? Another attempt at my ultimate masterpiece shirt. 
the big purple squiggly lines. Yes. Yeah. Neat as hell. So, uh, on a one to ten rating of the camp so far this year, what what would you say, Michelle? In all all things considered, in general. All things considered. Food um, knocks it down a few points. Yeah. Well, food aside, we can't account for the okay, food. Okay, food aside, I'd say, um, eight. Wow, not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. I think we're doing rather well here. I think that's a thumbs up. Yeah, definitely. It's a uh, th thumbs up <laughs> for me, Bob. It's a secret here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what is your favorite class this year? This is my favorite. <laughs> this summer. This week. This week. <laughs> I suppose if we want to cut it down like that. <laughs> um, I don't know. Let me see. Um. <laughs> okay, I think it would probably be. Mm -hmm. Maybe this class actually. This is a pretty fun. Either this or pottery. Or maybe drawing. Like I don't know. know. I think you've covered it all there, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Michelle, do you eat red meat? No, I do, but I don't like it. No, you don't? Well, why do you eat it? I well, that's it. That was a snap too. question, and she just rattled it off like it was nothing. Um, well, we're going we're gonna to switch over to Delia here. Hello, Delia. Zooming in. Okay. So who made that? What are you doing in there? Making a salad. <laughs> like that trick question. Is that fun? Are you in here, Blur? Those are the most brilliant questions I've ever heard. Do you have some better questions here? <laughs> The people who can't reach that can't write anyway. <laughs> the people who can't reach that can't write are too young to be in the class. <laughs> you can only be in, in video cam class if you can reach the paper on the ceiling to sign your name. I call zero and then call one, No, no one. No one but your area code. But you do do two of Simon finishes weaving first, Rockmore. What did you say? I said there are salmon out there, Rockman. This is my uh -huh. What have you been uh, doing, Morris? I've been cooking up the storm. I put the button What's question number two on the list? Well, let me see. We have this list of questions we're supposed to be asking people here. Okay. Uh, Come back. What, what person in the world do you admire most? Me? Uh. Let's see, Everett, Edward Everett Dirksen. Great. Why is that? Senator Dirksen is a great American. What what particular thing did he do that was great? Uh, he was a great politician. Okay, and I have another trick question for you. Okay. If you could be an animal other than human. What would it be? Uh, probably an Asian gecko. An Asian gecko? Yeah. Why? Because they can run up the walls, they eat flies, and they can honk like a bicycle horn. Hmm. Isn't that a good enough reason? <laughs> yeah. How have you been uh, feeling about the camp? How's the camp going for you? Oh, just fine. It's tough keeping all the sharks fed, though. Yeah. Do you have any uh, ideas or suggestions for improvements for the camp? 
Excuse me, my Mars. one of my minions calls. Yes. Uh, where would the butter be, oh Grady Marius? My mighty great Marius? No, yeah. <laughs> high high chef Marius. Of the kitchen? High chef. <laughs> Master Chef. Yes, Master Chef Marius, where's the butter? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the glass case refrigerator on the left. See, it just right. hooks itself. So if I go like that. What we need to make the camp better is more junk food. Right, Hadrian? Right, exactly. <laughs> We don't have enough. We're constantly running out. Okay. Well, I'll put that down as one of the suggestions for the improvements. Okay. See you That's later. That's all it needs. See you later, Rockman. Go look for the salmon. Well, I, I haven't seen the salmon, but here's an interesting person to interview here. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Raina Cohen. And where are you from, Raina? I'm um, from the San Francisco group. And so what are you doing up here? Well, I am hobnobbing with the Washingtonians, and there are some other people from California. and. See, um, I've been given the glorious title of camp director, so that means that I get to remind people to go back to their cabins and rest and to clear their tables and make sure they go to their classes. And sometimes when there are no classes, I hide out in places where there are obviously no students or <laughs> no campers, <laughs> like now. And I'm doing my t-shirt of the forest. T-shirt of, of the forest. This this is the forest. It's here. a Balinese forest, and there's hmm. amphibians and insects and lots of flowers. Very interesting T-shirt here. <laughs> kind of like primitive art, I would say. Raina, what is your opinion of how the camp has been going? Well, to me, it looks like it's wonderful. I I think it's great. I'm really impressed with the work that's been done in all the groups and it looks like everybody's having a good time mm -hmm. so I think it's good I think it's really good do you have any uh, suggestions for improvements for future camps? The only camps? improvement I can think of is um, right now during the camp is to have a talk with with the kids and just ask them how it's going for them because I think some some kids really enjoyed what they were doing and some kids wanted to switch to another group or spend more time in one area of art than another. And I think it's good to let them have their say and, and respect it. It might be possible. I, that's the only thing I could think of for improving. But food's good, the people are great, and got to do live on, and it's lovely. I do wish the other adults would stay up later, though. I'm tired of being the only person up past midnight. I want company. I want someone to play Scrabble with and, and to talk to. That's the only thing I mind. All the adults around here go to sleep early. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll try to stay up late tonight. Good, okay. We have to play Trivial Pursuit. But I think the camp's great, and um, it's wonderful being up here on the Cascade Mountains. It's just beautiful. Would you recommend this place to people to come and live, this area? This particular area? Yeah, or, you know, the Pacific Northwest. Oh, yeah. I love it up here. I think it's wonderful. Okay. Although I'm not here in the winter, so <laughs> in the summer it's great. Yeah, I think it's a good place. It seems really livable. I might come and live here after my trip to Asia. Hmm. Have to see what happens. But I'm still thinking of it. It's possible. Okay. But I know so many people living up here too. It makes it easier. Well, thanks for talking to me. Well, thanks for talking I'm to me. I'm gonna wander on. Okay. See you later. Bye. Hey, here's an interesting person with a beautiful <laughs> colored <laughs> t-shirt. Tell me who you are. I'm Daniela Gleason. And where are you from? I'm from Los Angeles. And uh, have you been enjoying the camp here? Yeah, it's lots of fun. And all the people are, are really nice and I'm really enjoying it to know everybody. Uh -huh. I'm having lots of fun. <laughs> That's a cool shirt. Thanks. And first I messed up and I didn't want to do it and then I... Looks like it's a gotcha it shirt that you bought like that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are nice colors.
Okay. I didn't like it at first, and then I painted over the design. Is this an interview? Mm-hmm. Is there anything special that uh, has happened to you at this camp that you want to tell us about? Um, I'm learning how to do sumi painting. I'm really enjoying that. I'm sure. having lots of fun. Learning the different techniques and stuff. Good. Bamboo. Okay, and let me go over to this other young lady here. <laughs> and uh, who are you? I'm Ariana Ward. And where are you from? Portland, Oregon. And are you enjoying the camp too? And uh, do you want to show us what you've just done? Oh, that's great, Arya. See? <laughs> now, what, what is this that you've done to your shoes here? Well, I took some paint and I painted them. I painted them. I just painted them. Yeah, I guess you did. Look pretty neat. Yeah. What I about like the it other much one? Better. Let's see the other one, too. Well, it's just the thing. It comes a train. <laughs> 